Well, hello. This is my first video, maybe my only video, I have no idea. But I have just been having so much fun with this mold that I thought I would share a little bit of what I've done with it and show you the process that I use to create one. I'm gonna get started showing you some that I have already made. This one is for my kitchen. We have a 1950s time capsule house that we're so lucky to have but these are the colors of my kitchen and it looks great in there this one is in neutral tones for a friend i don't have the hands on it because i'm getting ready to ship it and the last one is for my office just happy pastel rainbow colors and i'm probably a little too old for it but i don't really care so I'm starting out with a mica powder that I mixed myself. I just mixed up a bunch of things until it matched the color of the accent wall in my bedroom. It's done in peacocks, so I'm kind of leaning into that look. And here I am just brushing on the mica powder onto the mold and sped up for everyone's benefit. I'm just taking a lot of care to get in the numbers really well, and I am going up the sides. All right, I have one ounce of liquid diamonds resin mixed up. I like that one for detail areas because it's thin, so it gets down there really well. And I am mixing the same mica powder in because I want to be sure that the color has a lot of richness behind it and I don't want it to be altered by having another color in the background of it. But I also like the look of the brushed mica. At first, I pour a small amount over the detailed areas, which in this case, of course, are the numbers and around the center. Taking a micro swab and incredibly gently going around to be sure that the resin got in the inside the zeros and little areas like that, but I don't want to scratch the mica that I've already put down on the mold itself. And then just pouring the remainder. One ounce goes just to the very bottom of the little pegs. spritz of 99% alcohol. I find that it does a great job releasing bubbles without causing any problems with the finish. I think the ones that have a higher water content are what causes surface problems. This is the next morning, it's completely set and we're ready to move on to cleaning up the excess mica powder from the previous step. I wanna introduce you to my disgusting yellow microfiber rag. I have used this thing for at least a year and it still works fine. I like to work from the outside in so I don't have a problem with breaking the seal between the cured resin and the mold itself that way the next layers can't get down in between the mold and the cured resin there is a lot of cleanup with this mold at least if you choose to do it in several colors and use this method i'm just really really careful to get everything up this is another powder that i mixed up from it was the liquid uh, sorry Let's Resin, Rustic Gold and Silver, 
I was trying to go for kind of a champagne gold color because a lot of the metal in my bedroom is that tone. And these are the metallic powders, so they are a little bit different than Micah's. Much harder to clean up. Once again, going in with alcohol, cleaning up the metallic powder from where I don't want it to be. I have found that the microfiber cloth cleans the metallic powder up better than anything. Paper towels just don't quite get it, so, or baby wipes. And just getting all the little nooks and crannies to be sure. And this is another powder that I mixed this matches the main color of my walls. It's kind of like a sea glass color. And just every third one. You get the idea, here it is finished. The next color I'm going with is a seafoam green. This one, it's not quite just a pearl and not quite a chameleon. It has a little bit of a purple shift to it. Here is all the powder laid down at long last. This is six ounces of, I think it's tea expert, but just using some white pigment. And a couple just regular Morandi pigments. What I'm attempting to do, I want to match the light sea glass color for my backing because I want to be sure that the mica in that color doesn't get washed out. So I'm trying to match that one because the other ones can hold up on their own. a little bit of the same mica to kind of boost it. I honestly didn't want to use all of this because I love the color so much, so that's why I did a mix of pigments and the mica. some in this really tight spouted cup and going down the 
I'm calling them pegs, I guess. As thin as those are, you don't get the same leveling as you do with a wide open mold. It tends to want to hang up in there. So there's not a whole lot of traveling between the two areas. So I like to pour that first so it sort of connects them, I guess. Pouring the center. I do wish I had made this a bit more opaque, but it turned out okay. Just take this kind of slow and easy. You definitely don't want to do any doming. You want it to just be filled, if not a tiny bit underfilled, which kind of goes against everything I believe in, but on this mold, that's the best way to go. And a little spritz of alcohol. And just kind of fussing to make sure everything is good. Now I like to use toothpicks to reinforce those pegs because they're so thin and I'm afraid if it gets warm they'll just sag. So I'm just showing you kind of how thick the resin needs to be. You wait about 20 minutes or so so it thickens up. And I just barely lay the toothpicks down. I don't push them down at all. I just set them there and they settle in exactly where they need to be. And these were just some leftover resin pieces that I did. I usually make magnets or bases for shakers. Finally at the clock unmolding. I like to take my time, even though this is sped up, peeling it up this way has been the easiest way to unmold it. So here it is after unmolding. There's a little bit of little spots here and there that need to be sanded down a little bit, but overall it came out really clean. One of my toothpicks shifted, but it's not that big of a deal. But you can see it really does reinforce that. And this isn't completely cured. It's much better than if you do it without any reinforcement. I didn't have any paint pens or any acrylic paint that matched the color that I wanted to use, but I did have nail polish, so I went with that. It worked great. I'm just putting a few drops down at a time on a cap because I didn't want it to dry out really quickly on me. I needed it to stay really fluid. What I'm doing to wipe off the excess is just a tiny bit of alcohol on a lint-free pad. And as long as the nail polish is still wet, it cleans it off perfectly. All right, here it is done after all the clock movement is put on there. Overall, I am pretty happy with it. I appreciate you stopping by. Maybe I'll see you once again. Bye.